Hello friends, welcome to our channel. In this video, uh, we are going to discuss the part 5 of shopping cart. So in our previous video, we have created this entire product page where we can upload the product. So let's say, short super price 110, current stock 25 category menswear and let's select this one we'll show the image preview save on it and it will get saved here okay so we have created this entire page now the next part is stock page so let's start working on that so first we will simply go to our navigation menu and here we have the products and let's change this to something else let's put a star okay so we have changed the icon now let's open our stock page here it's completely empty as of now we have only added the session check on which will get invoked on our master page main layout page so here if we go on the products page here we have a certain structure and that same structure we are going to use we are going to copy all the required namespace and paste it here because all the same things are going to get useful here and here if you see we will we'll also copy this entire css again we are repeating it we have already discussed in our previous video at the end of the tutorial we'll just move it into a common file and refer it on all the pages so as of now for our simple understanding let it be as it is next will be this uh, success pop-up this entire code will take because we want it to be here okay and uh, let's create all the required messages here toggle success pop-up at the rate message toggle success pop-up so let's take the message parameter copy it from here and just paste it here next will be success pop-up this boolean and paste it here next will be the toggle success pop-up this method and paste it here so all these errors are gone so this is basically a model pop-up to show the success message and here in the database if we see with the product tables in the product table we have two records now and the current stock is 10 so basically like uh, we are going to display this entire structure in a grid view and use if there's a new stock for this kind of shirt or this kind of item then that stock can be updated for example if i want a, some new stock of this one from 25 to 10 or from 10 to 100 then we just need some page to update that part so in our dot stock dot razor component we'll create this one so we'll copy this entire structure as well and paste it here so here if you see we don't need this edit form here we don't need this and instead of product list we will make it as stock list and here we'll make it stock list so here we'll have to create a stock list so let's copy the product list and paste it here now instead of product model we will need the stock model and instead of this stock list, product list let's make it stock list so it's pretty simple and this stock list we're going to use it here so we don't don't need this card body and this if uh, this if part also we don't need We'll simply what we'll need is like stock. And if the stock is null, then we'll be showing this loading message. If it is not null, then we'll show the name, price, stock, category, and add stock. Instead of we don't need this one also. And here, let's remove this one else as well. 
and here we need simply stock we will have to create this add button click stick and the value will be add stock okay pretty simple so this looks fine here now the errors which we, we are getting is related to stock model so inside this our data models right click on custom model add a new class and let's name it as stock model let's make it public now inside this stock model we will add all the required properties so for here i'm adding the id name stock the current stock the new stock and the category name so this model will carry all the old stock in this stock and whatever the user is getting the admin of the website is updating that will get stored in the new stock so let's update the data annotations required namespace so we have used it here so this looks pretty simple now if we go on the stock.razor here we see all the compiled errors are gone okay so now we have to get the we don't have the stock name stock category okay the product name the stock and the category and we have to create the that's okay this looks fine now here uh, we have to create another another model pop-up to accommodate the add functionality so whenever user will click on add stock we are going to call this add button click and on click of that we are going to show one pop-up in that we will show the text boxes and the products which needs to be added so here so we have created this entire structure we have the model content model body model footer and inside the model footer we have the buttons and inside the model body we have edit form so here we will have this stock to update update button click and toggle add pop up all these methods so let's create the re remaining methods so first we'll create the flag show add pop up fine then we have toggle next one is inside the add pop-up we have toggle add pop-up so we'll simply change this one and instead of success pop-up we'll use show add pop-up fine this looks fine then we have this stock to update it's an object of stock model so we'll create it it's a stock model and let's make it null so we have this stock to update and here we have simply taken the name the product name the available stock and uh, the new stock and once the new stock plus the old stock both are done then we are simply saving it so then we have the update button click and this update button click is there so let's create the method so this is simply a method which will pass the stock to update to our apis and display the respective message after that it will show the updated stock so for that we have to get the product stock let's create a method for that as well so 
So it's a simple method, a call to our API to get the product stock. And this update button click. This is also resolved. Now this looks fine. Now here we have to create this add button click method and take the stock model as the input and assign it to our variable stock to update. So let's create that method. Okay, so in this add button click, we are taking the stock model as the input and assigning it to our stock to update, then calling the add to toggle add pop-up to display the pop-up. Okay, so this looks pretty fine. Now, next what we are going to do is create these methods in our service, service of our admin panel. So here we have the admin panel service. Inside this, what we are going to take is update product stock, one method. Then we have get product stock, second method. So these two methods we have to create. So let's minimize everything. And go to our admin panel service at the end. So here I have created two methods, get product stock and add product stock. Let's add these services in our interface. So here we have get product stock and we have add product stock. So this way we are done with uh, our service call in our admin panel. The same way we have to create methods in our API and the business service. So let's open admin controller. In our API we have opened admin controller. Let's minimize everything. At the end, let's create the required methods. So here we have created two methods. One is get product stock, another one is update product stock, and both are simply API call, uh, service calls to our final and the last layer shop dot logic where our entire logic resides. So we'll have to create the the respective methods for both of these methods in our admin service. So let's go there. remove this extra space okay so it looks fine now okay so here we have created two methods one is up get product stock another one is update product stock so let's first check the get product stock simply we are returning a list of stock model and we are named it as product stock then we are getting all the categories and the products so for each product we are getting the product ID name the stock available and the category name and filling it in this list and returning it back so it's a simple call and in update product stock we are getting from the stock we are getting the put single product and for that stock we are updating with the new stock so it's like the old stock plus the new stock and then we are calling the db context dot products not update and then finally we are saving the changes so it's a simple call let's update it in our admin service then simply let's take it one and put it here so i think it should work now let's build the entire product so there's an error Okay, update product stock is not accessible. Let's go in our admin service and update product stock. Okay, let's change it to okay. Here we have named it as add product stock and the stock dot razor it's update product stock. So let's change the name. Let's see in the controller what it is. It is update. Okay. So let's change it here as well in the interface. Okay, let's build it again. Okay, so here 
update product stock is returning a stock model but here we are getting it as flag so let's we'll have to change the call because it's actually a flag because based on the flag we are simply showing the message so let's go in there and make it as boolean and here as well so it works fine now in the admin panel service let's make it as return boolean here as well boolean and in our controller go to the implementation here it's boolean only so that looks fine let's run it so here the admin panel is opened it's login let's go on stock okay so we are still showing loading and not loading anything and we have this two stock let's go in the design okay let's remove this stock don't need that and also we don't have the on initialized method where we can call the get product stock on page load itself so let's stop it let's add method let's copy the syntax from our previous components okay let's have this one and let's add it here let's remove this one and instead of get categories get product stock let's run it again okay so we have the current stock whatever is available in our database let's click on add stock so we have the pop up of getting open the new stock let's make it 12 okay so 10 plus 12 is becoming 22 let's update it let me put a break point in our controller we have the admin controller update product stock and let's go in the service as well and put a breakpoint here let's click on update okay so i've got the model here in our post method i have the category name the id the new stock and the old stock we can continue let's press f10 it's not equal to null we have got the stock id based on the id we have got the product from our database and the same product we are updating with our new stock so 10 plus 22 save changes returns true continue and it shows the success message let's close it and here i have the updated stock in our db if we query now so it will show us instead of 10 it will show 22 so here we go let's update the second stock as well 100 update continue continue and close 125 yeah so that's it in this part in our next part we won't be going in the orders in the master section we'll directly go to our actual user interface for the customer where customer can see all the products and then add it add them to the cart and place the order once that section is done we'll come back to our order section where we will be able to see all the orders placed by our customers so that was it for today see you in the next video